how to be able to preach to uh, real human beings. Uh, the, the reality has been we've been preaching to screens for the last uh, few months, so it's nice to see some people in the flesh uh, and be with you uh, tonight. So, what are we first of all in, in the book of the Psalms uh, this evening? Uh, I'm going to read uh, from three Psalms, um, and they all run together. I'm going to read from Psalm 22, Psalm 23, uh, and Psalm uh, 24 uh, tonight, and we do trust God will bless us as we turn to uh, His Word. So, Psalm number 22 to begin with. Uh, this evening, Psalm 22, uh, verse number 1, it says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the word of my roaring? Uh, oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, in the night season, and I am not silent. Thou art holy, O thou inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in me, they trusted thee, and thou, did, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee, and with love, they trusted in me, uh, and were not uh, confounded. But I am a woman, and no man. An approach of men and despise the people. All they that see me be laughing to scorn. They shout out the lip, they shake their heads, saying, He trusted on the Lord, saying he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, saying he delighted in him. But thou art he that took me out of the womb, that didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon me from the womb, and thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. There is none to help, many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round, they gaped upon me with their mouths as a raven and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water on my bones out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. And I was brought me into the dust of death, for dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. Uh, they pierced my hands and my feet. I tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me, they part me. I cut part of my garments upon among them, and upon my lots, uh, upon, uh, and, and cast lots upon uh, my vesture. And maybe that will do for a reading of Psalm number 22. Psalm number 23, uh, I'm sure well known to uh, almost everybody in, in, in the hall. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He get, maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. Uh, for his name's sake, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord uh, forever. And finally, uh, Psalm number 24. Uh, we'll just read from verse number 7. Lift up your, your head, O ye gates. And be lifted up the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Even lift them up the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory, uh, Selah. We do trust God will bless the reading of his word to our hearts this evening. Is the microphone kicking in and out a little bit? There is a little bit. Do to? Go with it or go without it? Go without? I'll go without, that's fine. Good. I'll speak loudly and hopefully you can all hear me uh, at the back. Uh, these are three beautiful psalms that we find in the Word of God. And uh, I, I think it's no uh, consequence that these three psalms are put together. Um, I don't know why you came to this meeting this evening. Um, I have not come to you from Perth tonight to introduce you or to interest you in a religion. I have absolutely no interest in doing that for you tonight. I have no interest in introducing you to a church, although you find yourself in a church building this evening. That's not really why I came tonight. I came tonight to introduce you to someone, to a man called the Son of God, to a man we call Jesus Christ. And to look at him in these three little pictures as we find in Psalm 22 and Psalm 23 and Psalm number 24. You know, in Psalm number 23, we're going to think first of all about someone who is and can be our saviour. And you know, that's a great hope for every single one that meets in this hall this evening. He could be your saviour. In Psalm number 23, we're going to think about someone who can be your shepherd. And you know that's a great thing that you can have a shepherd this evening. Someone who cares for you and is deeply interested in you. 
And we're going to think of Psalm number 24, and it's just for the sake of alliteration. We're going to think about a sovereign. Uh, three S's, well, you'll all know I really think about a king this evening. I want to introduce you to a king. A king that can be your king this evening. And I wonder this evening if you know him as your saviour. If you know him as your shepherd. Or as you know him as your sovereign this evening. You know, these are three uh, lovely little psalms. And there are lots of different ways we could have looked at them this evening. You know, in, in, in Psalm number 22, we could have thought about the gloom. There's lots of gloom in Psalm number 22. We could have thought about Psalm number 23, about the glen. It's all about the shepherd and how he leads the flock into that where there's pasture. Or we could have thought about the glory of Psalm number 24 and the great king that we'll see in a future day. We could have thought about Psalm number 22. It's a psalm of isolation. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, we picture him as one who is alone. Uh, alone. He says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We could have thought about Psalm number 23 being a psalm of occupation. The fact that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be occupied with us and we're occupied with him. And, and Psalm number 24 is a future psalm, a psalm of revelation and the great day that we'll see the great king. But tonight, I want to think about a saviour, and a shepherd, and a sovereign. And I want to ask you again this evening, do you know him uh, as those uh, three uh, things? You know, I, I think it's remarkable. Uh, Psalm 22, we don't know the exact date it was written, but somewhere, it was written by David, it was written somewhere around 1000 BC. And you cast your mind forward a thousand years, and we come to a place called Calvary. And the Lord Jesus Christ is hanging upon a cross. And he says this, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I guess David, when he penned those words, maybe had no idea what he was writing about to a greater extent. And it was going to take a thousand years for those words to be fulfilled. But they would be when the Son of God, God's only Son, said this, My God, my God, why hast thou uh, forsaken me? I was looking at this uh, this morning. Uh, it's lovely when you look at the very last verse of Psalm 22 and the very last line, that he hath done this. You know, if that was written in Hebrew, do you know what the words would say? It would say this. It is finished. So whether you take the first verse of Psalm 22 or the last verse of Psalm 22, they both take you to Calvary. And they both point you to a saviour. The one who was forsaken by his God. And the one that finished the work that he was given to do. You ask me tonight, why is he a saviour? Who does he save? Well, praise God he saved me. And praise God he saved many that sit in this hall this evening. And maybe many that are online tonight too. And he saved you. He is your saviour. What did he save you from? He saved you from your sins. That which was taking you away from God. The Bible says he came to seek and to save that which was lost. And friends tonight, if you've never got saved, if you've never known him as your saviour, you're lost tonight. You're lost to God. Because you're still in your sins. But you know the good news of the gospel is this. That you can be saved. You can have a saviour. One who loves you so much. And he gave his all for you at that place. It called Calvary. You know being lost is horrible. I used to get lost all the time. But the number of times I had to go to. Well it was always that centre at the middle of a shopping centre. Where you had to have your name announced. Could the parents of Scott Brooks. Please come and reclaim it. It's a horrible feeling when you suddenly realise you're lost. 
I wonder if it will dawn on a soul in this meeting tonight that you're lost. That you're lost in all your sin. That which is against God is taking you away from God. And tonight you're lost. You know, there's a story told of a man who had a hundred sheep. And one got lost. Just one. What would the shepherd do? Well, my Bible says he went and found the sheep that was lost. You know, maybe the Saviour will come to this place tonight and find a sheep that's lost. We'll find you that is lost in your sins and he'll bring you to a knowledge of him. You know, my friends, as I read Psalm 22, as one who has been lost and is now found, Psalm 22 is a, a, a psalm of delight for me because it tells me how much he must have loved me. As I read, read down through those verses in Psalm 22, it can't not touch my heart all that he went through for me there. It talks about bulls of Bashan besetting him around. It talks about dogs being around him. It talks about his tongue cleaving to his jaw. It talks about him being pierced through his hands and his feet. And as you read it, your mind cannot be turned, or cannot not be turned to the place it called Calvary. And all that he went through for us but you know, that's that first verse that I want to leave with you this evening. When he cried from the cross, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You know, as bad as the cross was in terms of the physical sufferings, the nails through his hands and his feet, the lash that he faced at the hands of the soldiers, and I say it reverently, it was nothing compared to what he faced at the hand of a holy God. When the Bible says this, the one, that was, the one that knew no sin was made sin for us. And the hymn would say, he took my sins and my sorrows and he made them his very own. You know, I can say that tonight because at Calvary's cross, he took my place. Every sin, every lie, Every evil thought, every swear word, every evil intention that left my mind or left my mouth or left my hands at Calvary's cross, he paid the price for them all. I wonder tonight if he is your saviour. You know, being lost in life is terrible. It's horrible to be lost. I tell you kindly, being lost in eternity is dreadful. You see, to be lost in eternity is to be lost forever. And there is no way back. That's why I cry to you tonight to have a real concern about your soul and where it will go once your life is over. Where will you spend eternity? You know, it won't be based upon being here this evening. It won't be based upon how you've lived your life. It will be based upon whether you have a saviour. And whether you have the saviour. The one who died upon the cross. Psalm 23, you know, it's great to have a saviour. It's also great to have a shepherd. One who loves you and cares for you and is interested in you and watches over you all the time. And I guess if I was to ask anybody in this room this evening, if I was to ask you maybe to, 
tell me one verse from the Bible. I reckon most would say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. A lot of us learned it at school. And it's probably the best known verse in the word of God. The Lord is my shepherd. But I can say that because he is my shepherd. Because he is my saviour. And I tell you, it's good to have a shepherd. The hymn right would say, I have a shepherd, one I love so well, how he has blessed me, tongue can never tell. You know, my father was a shepherd. You know, when I look into a field of sheep, do you know what I see? I see a field of sheep. And to the greater extent, I guess, most in the room, if you looked at a field of sheep, that's what you would see. Can I tell you what my father-in-law sees? He sees the one with the bad leg. He sees the one that's not eating with the others. He sees the one that's maybe struggling in some way or other. And he recognises all the problems and all the issues. And he goes into the field and he deals with it. That's what a good shepherd is. He watches his flock. He knows them by name. And he cares for them intently. You know, as a Christian, my Bible tells me we've been blessed with all spiritual blessings even in the heavenlies. You couldn't be more blessed if you're saved tonight. But that doesn't mean life won't be without its problems. You know, there is something being taught just now called the prosperity gospel. And it tells you this, if you come to God, if you believe in God, you will have health, wealth and happiness. Can I tell you this? You won't have any of those three things potentially. Being a Christian will not preserve you from having bad health. Being a Christian will not make you wealthy. Being a Christian sometimes will not make you happy. But can I tell you this? It's the most wonderful thing to be, to be a Christian. To have somebody who looks out for you and cares for you every single day and knows what you're going through and knows the troubles of life and cares for you intently. You know, there's a man in the Bible called Paul. And Paul, well, we don't even know what it was. But he, I think he had a physical problem. And do you know what? He prayed three times to God that this problem would be taken away. And do you know what God said to him? My grace is sufficient for thee. I'll be with you. I'll help you through the problems. And that's what God will do for you tonight, my friends. Whatever problem you're facing in life, he'll be with you. You know, there's a man called Horatio Spafford. And he wrote a hymn, a very well-known hymn. Well, I need to tell you the background to his story. Horatio Spafford was a very wealthy man. And he moved to the great city of Chicago to set up business. And his business was real estate, buying and selling property. And he bought a huge swathe of real estate across Chicago. He bought it in the spring. In the October of that year, there was the Great Fire of Chicago. And his entire wealth was wiped out in a moment. A couple of years later, he was needed to come to England to do business, living obviously in, in North America. Something held him up in North America and he sent his wife and his daughters ahead of him on a boat. And that boat sank in the Atlantic, taking with him, taking with it his daughters. And the news reached him from his wife. She survived. But she survived alone. You think to yourself, what? how could a man deal with a situation like that? How could a man get through life having lost his wealth, now having lost his family? Do you know the hymn this man penned? He wrote this. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, 
Thou hast taught me to know it is well. It is well with my soul. Spafford realised the most important thing was this. It was well with his soul. That the Saviour would be with him. I don't have time this evening to walk you through Psalm 23. Do it tonight in your own time. And look at everything that the Saviour brings to you. Look at everything you get with this great shepherd. The one who cares for you. The one who will lead you beside the still waters. The one who will restore your soul. The one who feeds you. The one who cares about you so intently. He loves you more than anybody else will ever love you. And he showed that by dying for you upon the cross. But you know, he continues to love you. And he continues to care for you. And you know this. The one that saved me. Back in 1987. The one who became my saviour. In 1987. He's still my saviour. And he'll always be my saviour. And the Bible says, no man can pluck me out of the Father's hand. You know, if you're saved tonight, you will never be lost. You're always saved. Why? Because he's a great saviour. And he's a great shepherd. The one who cares for the sheep. But you know, I want you to think finally about Psalm number 24. And in Psalm number 24, we have the sovereign and we have the king. You know, the last time this world saw the Lord Jesus, they saw a man hanging upon a cross, blood stained, broken, bruised. he would say a man that was beaten a man that was defeated they saw a man dying upon a tree but you know my friends there's coming a day when this world will see him in a very different way you know in Psalm 22 nobody saw the darkness no eyes saw the saviour in the darkness in Psalm 23, some of us see him as our shepherd. But can I tell you this? In Psalm 24, every set of eyes in this world will see him as the great king. And my Bible says this. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Not a beaten man. Not a bruised man, not a defeated man, but a glorious man. The great uh, king. And my Bible tells me this. For those of us who are Christians, this same Jesus shall so come as you saw him go. There's coming a day, my friends, when he's going to come again. I'm not going to try and forecast when that will be. There's been lots of forecasts around the situation we're being brought through is now around COVID-19. And, and surely the Lord will come soon. And, you know, he will. He'll come soon. That's what the Bible says. He's going to come soon. And he's going to come again to take those of us who are Christians home to be with himself. And, and that's a wonderful hope. You know, you might like Methel. I like Perth. I like Perth as a place. It's a great place to live. I can tell you this. Perth is nothing compared to heaven. Perth is nothing compared to the glory and the splendour of that wonderful place. You think about the most wonderful place you can think about on planet Earth and multiply it by a million times and you're not even close to what heaven will be like. We used to sing in Sunday school, heaven is a wonderful place filled with glory and grace. I'm going to see my Saviour's face because heaven is a wonderful place. But I wonder if you're going there. You know, after I go to heaven with all the Christians that are here, 
But the wonderful thing about the Bible is it doesn't stop. And it keeps on telling what's going to happen next. God's good to you, by the way. God is very faithful in what he tells you. He leaves nothing unturned in terms of knowledge. He tells you exactly what's going to come next. And my Bible tells me this, and I don't have time to cover all that lies in the book of the Revelation. You read it for yourself. Most of Revelation is still to happen. The last book in the Word of God. The first thing that's happened is this. There's going to be seven years of tribulation. The like of which this world has never seen. You think a pandemic is bad. You think World War I and World War II were bad. I tell you, there is significantly worse to come in the Great Tribulation. Seven years where God will pour out his wrath upon planet Earth. And you think to yourself, well, what will man do when they see the holiness and the righteousness of God? Surely they'll bow the knee. Well, I'll tell you what man does. He shakes his fist at God. He says, no God for me. And my Bible tells me about a scene. And there's a great plain. The plain of Megiddo in the centre of Israel. And in that plain there's going to be a great battle called the Battle of Armageddon. And in that great day, the armies of the world will be arrayed against the Son of God. Not the broken man, not the beaten man of the Gospels this time, but the great and glorious King. My Bible says with the word of his mouth he'll destroy the armies in a moment of time. The psalmist asked the question this. Who will ascend unto the Lord? I want to apply that to you this evening. Who will ascend unto the Lord? Will you? Well the psalmist answers his own question. He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. If you want to go to heaven, my friends, you need to have clean hands and a pure heart. And that can only happen through the work of the cross. Not effort, not trial, not determination, not keeping of commandments, not attending church, but trusting in him. Great to have a saviour. I hope you do. Wonderful to have a shepherd. One that cares for you every step of the journey. Great to think about a future king that is coming again. But my question to you this evening is this. Is he coming for you? A saviour? A shepherd? a sovereign and do trust God will bless us with his wonderful and his only salvation, let's pray our God our Father we do bow again in thy presence and we do thank thee again for the Lord Jesus, we thank thee again for this uh, time spent together around thy word, we do just thank thee for these uh, scriptures that have been written aforetime. time that they are written Father for our learning and Father we do again just thank thee for these wonderful verses that relate to us of the great Saviour and the one indeed who died upon the cross to save us from our sins. We thank that we can have a Saviour, one of who indeed who died for us. We thank you, Father, for a shepherd who cares for us and the one indeed who knows all that we're going through in life. And Father, for the great King, for a great Sovereign who's coming again one day. Our Father, we do again just ask in thy goodness that we bless every soul, whether it's in this hall or whether it's online this evening listening to this message that thou would bless us with thy salvation our father we do again just thank thee that thou art long suffering with us many of us have heard this message time and time and time again our god we ask that thou would have patience with us just a little bit longer that we might know thee as our only saviour bless us father now as we impart keep us in thy care we do pray and father again we just bow our hearts again to thank thee for the lord jesus in his precious name